Sam Mendes directs this modern yet stylistically old-fashioned motion picture, released 50 years after the pilot entry, Dr. No premiered in October of 1962. At 143 minutes, the 23rd James Bond picture is also the series' longest, but quite frankly, it's also the best paced. Never is there a dull moment, from the pulse-pounding dirt bike and train chase that opens the film, to a harrowing escape inside London's famed tube. Impeccably beautiful in every shot, nine-time Oscar nominee for cinematography Roger Deakins expertly uses harsh lighting, dark shadows, and bright colors, filling every frame with tremendously gorgeous imagery. Much has been said for Daniel Craig's portrayal of 007. While his first two entries successfully rebooted the franchise for the 21st century, they were decidedly lacking many of the traditional Bond elements. Gone were the gadgets, humor, and bombastic theme song. Quantum of Solace was a frantic mess and an unfortunate disappointment. Luckily, Skyfall has returned to form in more ways than one, including several humorous callbacks to past entries in the Timeless series. No longer the invincible secret agent we know and love, Bond is clearly vulnerable and weaker here, which although off-character for the series, creates a good deal of tension and suspense in many key scenes. Presumed dead following a mission gone wrong, a beaten down and worn out Craig finds himself forced back into action when MI6 headquarters are attacked and M's life is threatened. In her largest role to date, Judi Dench's steadfast and seasoned portrayal of Bond's boss is captivating to watch. The film script and much of the dialogue almost seem self-aware, with many references to the good old days of the Cold War and traditional espionage. As the blonde-haired weirdo hell-bent on revenge, Javier Bardem's creepy and chilling delivery creates one of the more memorable Bond villains to date. I won't miss next time, Mr. Silva. Not bad, James, for a physical wreck. What? Thank you. You got me. Now, here's your prize. It's called radio. I do hope that wasn't for me. No, <laughs> but that is. Despite some fascinating developments with both, neither of the Bond girls receive any significant portion of the screen time, with Bond focusing most of his attention on the motherly M. Making a triumphant return to the series is Bond's snarky quartermaster, with the role of Q now being played by Ben Wishaw in what we can only hope is the first of many movies for him. Although he doesn't provide Bond with many fancy gadgets, their playful relationship keeps things light. In most other scenes, however, Craig's attempts at quick puns and one-liners seems to fall flat. This serious version of Bond might just not be cut out for humor. Curiously withholding the iconic gun barrel sequence for the end credits, this film's cold open is a remarkably exciting 12 minutes of action, tension, and emotion. And while the film never quite returns to that high point, the remainder of the film certainly isn't lacking. The grand finale is a beautifully choreographed siege in northern Scotland that is a treat to watch, even if it feels a touch anticlimactic and drawn out. But for its few flaws, this is a delightfully fast, thrilling, and thankfully, Bond-esque adventure many fans of 007 will enjoy. Skyfall. Brilliant execution, irresistibly entertaining Bond. Now that you've heard my opening day review, let's read some of yours from the YouTube comments. Let's rate Skyfall, a double nine. Many praise the action and emotional resonance of this film, which plays things a bit closer to the chest. You thought it was awesome. Time will tell if this goes down as the best Bond yet, but it is definitely up there, even if certain elements feel forced, and Bardem's second act escape sequence feels awfully similar to the Joker's in The Dark Knight. I thought this was an awesome film too. 